to Relationships at Work, your guide to building workplace connections and avoiding those leadership blind spots. I'm your host, Russell Wallacher, a communications and leadership nerd slash expert with a couple of decades successful as such of experience in both those areas and a whole heap of curiosity on how we can make the workplace better. If you're a leader trying to understand and improve your impact on work culture and the employee experience, you're in the right place. This is Thursday. This is a mini episode, a quick and valuable bit of information to shift our thinking for the week ahead, usually about 10 minutes or so. It's all inspired by our Raw Note newsletter, which I highly encourage you check out. Just go to the website, russellolliker.com or relationshipsatwork.ca, and you'll find all the buttons to press at the top. But for now, let's get into it. Our topic today, the impact of inaction. I'm reminded of this point a lot when I see conversations online about what workplace culture is. Many, including executives, seem to think that culture is the sum of the words said and actions taken at work. Sounds right, right? But it's actually missing a much bigger picture. One of the most powerful, communicative, and impactful actions we can make as leaders on our work cultures is doing nothing. It's just not the words said or actions taken, but the words not said and the actions not taken that inform our cultures. Not responding to an email, not addressing bad behavior, not answering a question, not providing direction, not making ourselves available to our teams, not actively listening, not understanding the value of the work of our teams. These various types of inaction speak volumes to teams, whether we as leaders choose to understand it or not. Those messages we're saying with inaction, heard loud and clear, include, we don't care, you're not that important, we don't have time for you, we're okay with bad leadership, you're not a priority. That is the things we communicate when we don't do anything. Now, this may come as a surprise to many leaders, Hell, a lot of the time, leaders aren't even aware of these impacts. Why? Because we're often too busy. Letting our calendars and reactive nature be our guide, rather than the effort and space that allow for actual good leadership. We're too busy. We're off to the next meeting, the next urgent email, the next fire to put out. Not understanding we're actually hurting, impacting our work culture. So let's look at how inaction has real impacts on work culture and our work relationships. First, it erodes trust. When we as leaders fail to address problems or make decisions, it hurts our credibility. Trust is foundational to a healthy culture. And once it's compromised, staff question the effectiveness of that leader. If it happens enough, that opinion and skepticism can spread. Another is it decreases morale and engagement. Inaction on issues that affect employees directly, such as unresolved conflicts, lack of recognition, or perpetuating poor working conditions, they actually hurt morale and engagement. Employees that feel their concerns are ignored or minimized, it forces staff to be less likely to invest in their work or the organization's success. Another thing that inaction does is that it encourages toxic behavior. One of those examples I gave was around not punishing bad behavior, which can look like bullying, harassment, or discrimination. When employees see this, it feels like those behaviors are normalized, or at least tolerated, and even rewarded sometimes through promotions or opportunity. Inaction not only harms the victims, but also signals to other employees that such behavior, it's acceptable. This is how toxic workplace cultures are formed, where respect and professionalism are undermined, making it difficult to attract or retain great staff because they see what it's like. People talk. Inaction also stifles innovation and growth. What if employees have new ideas, but they notice that leaders don't listen or act upon them or see that the organization is resistant to change due to leadership inaction? Why would employees offer innovative ideas in this environment? Here's a a spoiler, they wouldn't. And eventually they'll go somewhere else to share those ideas. Last, inaction from leadership creates uncertainty and confusion. Especially during change or a crisis, inaction is frightening 
to workplace culture. Many organizations felt that during the pandemic. It can create uncertainty and confusion for these employees. They need leaders to lead, especially in situations that have few answers. Without clear direction or communication from leaders, employees don't understand the organization's priorities, their roles, or how they should adapt to these changes. So there's things like anxiety, there's stress, there's a lack of focus. Only further distracting from the organization's cohesion and ability to execute its strategy, if it has one, effectively. So you can see, you can feel how inaction is such a part of a culture. Action, even the wrong ones, can actually still be better sometimes than no action at all. Actions made and decisions taken are signs of leadership, while inaction forces employees to fill in the blanks as to why something is not being done or said or talked about. And it's not usually a good fill in the blank. I'm not saying action has to be taken for action's sake. I'm not. Sometimes the right move is not to do anything. But that's when strong, compassionate, and transparent communication comes in, which is in itself an action. We can be the leaders our teams and workplace cultures need. And that comes with intention, effort, and participation. Otherwise, we're not actually leaders. We're obstacles to a better workplace. How was that? That's it. That's done. That is another mini episode of Relationships at Work, your guide to building workplace connections and avoiding leadership blind spots. I'm Russell Olker, your host. I love doing this with you. I love having these conversations. I hope you find them of value. Uh, if you like these, these mini episodes, like I said off the top, they're all inspired by our Raw Note newsletter, which is actually a couple of months ahead of these recordings. So if you're curious as to where we're going, insights provided, Go to russellolliker.com or relationshipsatwork.ca. And at the top, you can sign up for our free uh, raw newsletter, raw relationships at work. I am so witty. Anyway, just push all the buttons, follow all the directions. By all, I mean one or two. Uh, needless to say, you'll be signed up and you'll be all ready to go with uh, raw notes in your email, in your inbox. All right. Have yourself a great day and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.